Hey guys, this is Larry with Packmaster's Dog Training. A um, bunch of you guys are always asking how we teach stuff, especially the more complicated things, uh, trick training. I don't do a lot of trick training, but I do teach certain things. And so um, I did a seminar last week, and, and my buddy Leroy Williams up in Beacon, New York, shout out to Leroy, his dogs were doing reverse handstands. And I used to teach my dogs how to do that. And I told Leroy, I say, hey, Leroy, I don't teach Luca that because his drive is too high. He gets confused and I don't have the patience for that. And so I thought about that on the trip home and that's kind of lazy on my part, okay? I'm a dog trainer. I should have the patience. It makes it a little more challenging for me. So me and Luca had a conversation. I say, hey, bro, I said, I'm gonna teach you how to do a reverse handstand. He's like, all right, you go. I'm gonna get excited, but it's all good. I said, okay, you can get excited, but we're going to work through this. So he doesn't have it complete yet. I'm in the process of teaching. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to show you now how we get started. We break everything down into little pieces. So when you guys see my dogs do something cool, you say, how did you teach that? We don't just try to teach the full movement. We teach it. We break it down into very small pieces. So I'm going to show you how I started and where he's at right now. It's super hot out here, so we're not going to take too long. Um, I'm using a clicker for this. You guys probably never see me use a clicker. I do use a clicker certain times, and here's why. I'm not using a verbal marker on this because a verbal mark, quiet, Luca. The verbal marker with Luca gets him excited. He's used to my verbal marker. He knows that he did something to make me happy and that something good is coming. So it gets him too worked up to teach something more complicated like this. So I turn to the clicker. He gets happy and excited. He understands the clicker, but not so excited, okay? So, the first, thing I, the first thing you have to know, your dog has to know how to walk in reverse, to walk backwards, to teach the reverse handstand. So if your dog knows how to walk backwards, you can start teaching this. And so the way we do it, I'm going to start with a, with a bed. I have a Karanda bed over there. It's only probably six inches off the ground, okay? So I'm going to start with something very low and have him back up on it. The second his feet hits that, I click and reward. I did that for two days, probably five, six minutes at a time at night. Very, very short sessions, okay? And then the next day, in reality, I should have went to a second bed, just a few inches higher, but I didn't have a second bed. So I went straight to a hay bale. The hay bale was a little harder because it's a lot higher, okay? So I suggest small increments. I pushed it a little harder. But instead of talking anymore, let's go over here. I'm going to show you what I mean. Come on, Luca. Okay, so you see here, I have the bed over here, all right? I'm going to put Luca in front of me, and I'm going to have him reverse up to the bed with his two back legs, okay? It's going to look like this. Come here, Luca. Front. Handstand. Good. So you see he reversed both legs. I reward. Front. Handstand. Now, you see I'm not giving him the food by hand. I'm throwing it and letting him get it. There's a reason for that. For one, I do that with a lot of things. But for two, if I decide later on I want him to walk in a handstand on his two front feet, he's already starting to get comfortable with moving on his two front feet while his legs are elevated. I'm going to show you one more time there, OK? So if you notice, that time when he went back, his back legs went much higher. That's because we moved on to higher things. I'm going to skip the hay bale. We're not going to go do the hay bale. That's, that's a little bit higher than that. I'm going to go straight to the crate top. That's what we're using now. Looks like this. Now if you notice, Luca took off out of the picture and went over there by the hay bale. He starts to know what we do, how we're practicing this, okay? So now I'm going to use something a little higher. We're going to use the, the top of a crate here, okay? All right. So now it gets a little more difficult. Come here, Luke. First. Good boy. Very nice. Good. Front. Good. See how he has to move forward a little bit on his front legs? That's for down the road. Good boy. So you guys get the picture. You see how he's working through this. Now we're going to go to the next step, all right? For people at home, you move slower with this, okay? You take your time. 
small increments. I jumped ahead a little fast, but because I know he can handle it. Okay, now we're getting closer to simulating the wall, right? Look, quiet. I'm talking here. Come on, dude. Come on, man. It's 4th of July weekend. He's excited. So now I put it up like that because eventually when he's walking and getting on something high enough, we, we remove the objects and he just does it on a wall. But Luca, out. Come here. So I'm hoping he shows the mistake that we've had here before. Come here, Luca. If I'm right, he's going to veer off to the side and avoid going on top of the crate, okay? I'm hoping he does so I can show you how we fix that, all right? All right, come here. Reverse. Oh, he did it. Very nice. We fixed that yesterday. I'm going to show you how. Come here. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Come here. Reverse. Okay. Good. That's what I wanted him to do. Do you see how he went backwards and mixed the, missed, missed the target? He veered off to the side. He was doing that on both sides the other night, and I fixed that pretty easily. I'm going to show you how, okay? Hey, easy. This is my garbage can. I tell this to my clients all the time, guys. When we are teaching something new, cheat to help the dog. Cheat. Make it easy. Make it so simple that they can't fail. So he's veering off to the right. I put a barrier there, so now he can't veer off to the right. It's going to help him go forward, okay? Make sure you can see it from a good angle, Sophia, please. All right, Luca, come here. Come here. Front. Reverse. Now, right here. Come here. Can't stand. Yes, good handstand, Luca. Good boy. Come here, Luca. Come here. Ah, ah, right here, handstand. Good handstand. Good. Good handstand, Luca. See what I mean? He gets it. He's starting to get it. So in another day or two, I'll be able to remove the crate completely, and he'll do that uh, against a car, against a wall, against anything. The point is, this took a couple of days, guys. Less than 10 minutes a night, really, okay? The whole purpose of, of this video is to show you that when the dog really understands what you want, you can make some pretty cool things happen. I'm not the most patient person when it comes to teaching complicated things. Sophia is behind the camera shaking her head right now like, yeah, he's not out, Luca, okay? But I guess I'm not. But this is good for me. This makes me a better trainer. And the dog loves it. So for the everyday dog owner, get out and teach your dog something. Break it down into little, little steps. If you fail and you don't succeed at doing this, that's fine. You're still spending time with your dog, okay? Anything else you could think of, Luca? Anything at all? But the other night, guys, he was veering off to both sides. I put a garbage can on each side, which makes it very easy for him to go back and do that. Quiet, dude. See, he's always ready to go. I know, it's 4th of July weekend. You're super excited. You're smiling. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Doesn't want to look at the camera. He, he looks at me. You know why? Because I'm the greatest thing in the world to him. That's it. I know. You're so awesome. But we're going to continue to work on this. And in a few days, it'll look real sharp. Okay? So thanks to my buddy Leroy up in Beacon, New York, for inspiring me to get back to teaching complicated things. Way to go, Leroy. Um, I don't know. Anything else, Sophia, you could think of? Because I know we're going to stop this video and I'm going to say, oh, I forgot to tell him this. So if I did forget, you guys have questions, drop me an email, okay? And if you haven't yet, please Sorry about that. We got cut off for a second because I got a freaking phone call and it interrupted the video when I, I was telling you. Please like and share the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I normally don't ask people to do that, but I guess I'm supposed to or something like people keep telling me. I normally don't ask for much. But go ahead and subscribe and like, share, whatever, or, or don't. It doesn't matter. Um, one quick thing I wanted to touch on. I made a video the other day of my dog doing some stuff, and he was spinning and stuff. And I had a couple people comment. They were competitors, IPO people. Uh, it's a bad idea. Shouldn't teach your dog to do that because when they get confused in competition, they're going to start spinning. Let me tell you something about that. That is absolutely ridiculous. There is no such thing as teaching your dog too much. 
the more you teach, the better. If your dog gets confused in competition or in everyday life, it's not because you taught him something else. It's because what he failed to do or she failed to do when she got confused didn't know very well. You didn't teach it well. The communication is not there. The relationship is not there. Plain and simple. That is a lack of training and a lack of communication. Teaching your dog a thousand different commands isn't going to make him confused when you give him a different command. There's no such thing. That's completely asinine. Okay? It's just, it's, it's comical. It's just comical. Get out and teach. Have fun. Embrace it. Enjoy your dog. Okay? Um, I hope this helps a little bit to show how we break things down to teach. All right? Thanks a lot, folks. Enjoy.